What's going on guys? This is James Allen. You're watching the uh, ICP Developer Journey Series where we follow Definity's documentation on how to become an ICP blockchain developer. And in this lesson, what we're going to cover is how to pull third-party canisters into our project. Uh, in other words, how to use def dependencies and a DFX environment. Now, um, every programming language has its uh, own dependency uh, package system. Uh, Node.js uses NPM. And for a long time, iOS used to use something called CocoaPods or Carthage. But now you could just use uh, XPM, the Xcode Package Manager. So similarly, in Motoko, in the ICP developer ecosystem, there are dependencies that you could pull using DFX depths or DFX dependencies. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use that. So let's hop on a code editor and have some fun. All right, guys. Um, this is where uh, we cover how to use third-party canisters. Again, we're looking at lesson 2.3. And let's get to the instructions. So the first thing they want us to do is uh, to uh, uh, navigate to our developer journey directory and start a new instance of DFX. So let's load up terminal. I like to make this big for you guys so you can see what's going on. All right, so far so good. Uh, I'm not sure what directory I'm in. Let's uh, navigate to the developer journey directory. And we're in. Let's start a new instance of uh, DFX in the background. All right, um, we got a, uh, we initialized a replica and let's start a new project with the DFX new command. And this project is gonna be called dependencies. We're gonna use Motoko. There's gonna be uh, no front end and we're gonna skip the internet identity. So we're just following these instructions here. Uh, we created a new dependency. Uh, we use Motoko, no front end, and we didn't need any extra features. So uh, if we look at our directory now, we should have a dependency folder. Let's navigate into it, dependencies. And here we go. We could probably load this now in Visual Studio Code. So um, I don't know why it's loading the playground. Let me see something. Yeah, I didn't navigate to it clearly. Dependencies. There we go. So we are in this uh, main Motoko file, which is a basic actor uh, that returns hello world. And let's move this actor down. And what they want us to do is um, they said first open the DFXJSON file in your directory. So let's open the configuration file. You need to configure your dependencies back in canisters to have dependencies of internet identity with canister ID uh, of this number on the mainnet. This is the canister ID, definitely canister used to interact with ICP's identity and authentication product. The developer journey will dive deeper into internet identity in a later tutorial. So um, uh, we have dependencies back end. So now let's add this uh, dependency, which is uh, the internet identity dependency. So let's copy that. Uh, as you can see right here, it says you could do so by editing the DFXJSON file to reflect the following configuration. And we already have the dependencies back in canister. Now let's add the internet ID canister. So let's add a comma to indicate um, uh, that we're going to add a new object. And let's add uh, this internet ID canister. Uh, so let's save it. So now we have the internet ID identity canister, uh, which we could pull with this particular ID. Now they want us to run the DFX uh, depths pull command so we could pull the dependency. Let's fire up a terminal uh, right on Visual Studio Code. And uh, let's do a DFX. Well, let's make sure we're at the right directory. Let's do a DFX depths pull. And maybe I should do it in the other terminal because it's bigger. So uh, let's clear this. We're in the right directory. Let's do a DFX depths uh, pull. So now it's fetching the dependencies. It found it with that ID. So it's pulling that canister with this particular ID, as you could see. Uh, are we done? I think we are. Let's look at the 
Visual Studio Code. Yeah, we are. And we have this depths folder, which is what they want us to find. The depths folder is also created in your project. Uh, and you should have a depths poll.json, which is this right here, which is the basically the configuration for the dependency that we have, which is internet identity in this example. And you're seeing uh, the name, the WASM hash, and all this good stuff. All right, um, using DFX depths. Next, you'll set the init argument for the dependency canister using the dfx depth init command. An init argument is an argument that will be passed to the canister when it's deployed. This command will iterate over all listed dependencies in a pull JSON file. So let's do that. Uh, dfx depths init. So dfx depths, which stands for dependencies init. And we should get this as a return. And we did. So um, it needs a it needs a, an argument, and if we're gonna pass it no argument, we we, we should put null, right? So it, it even says it right here. This output shows that the internet identity canister requires an init argument. So, um, all right, um, let's do this command. So we could pass it a null command as an argument, right? So we're doing a dfx depth in it with the canister ID, uh, which is the init identity. And the argument is going to be null. Let's press enter. And it works. And now let's do uh, dfx depths deploy. So now um, uh, it's deploying the dependencies, as you could tell. Dependencies are deployed. Now we could do a DFX deploy. We could deploy the canister on a local instance. As you can see, it's creating the canister. And we just need a URL. And there we go. This is the, so you see now it gives us two URL. It gives us uh, the internet identity URL and uh, the, the canister URL. So let's look at both. So if I go here and paste this, so we get the typical uh, um, uh, candid UI, uh, which is a greet function. So I could type James and it should say, hello, James. Okay. Now let's look at the internet identity uh, URL. Okay. Let's go here and uh, paste it. And here you have uh, the candid UI for the internet identity, right? Which I'm not quite sure I understand yet. As you could tell, there's a, you could add authentication methods here where you could uh, add authentication method and confirms them and add metadata to those authentication methods. And I'm sure we're gonna cover that in depth in later episode. But for now, um, uh, this is all they want us to get used to. Basically learn the flow of um, basically um, uh, adding a third party uh, canister as a dependency in your configuration file, which is what we did, right? So if, we're, if we go to the configuration file, we added the canister of internet identity. That's a third party canister. Once we've added it, we pulled it with the DFX depths pull, right? And once we pulled it, it added this depths folder, which has the pull.json, which has all the configuration we need. And we could uh, initialize uh, the dependencies. And more importantly, we could deploy these dependencies prior to deploying our entire project. So this was pretty straightforward and easy. I hope you found this, um, this tutorial useful because I definitely did. And yeah, I'll see you next time. So we just covered dependencies and I believe the code that we went through was pretty straightforward and easy. I hope you found it that way because that's how it was for me. In the next episode, we're gonna skip uh, two lessons. Uh, we're basically going to skip the lesson on candid UI and the lesson on testing because I found uh, the lesson on candid UI redundant because we've already used candid UI, to be honest. I didn't see the point of it. And regarding the testing, I don't want to cover testing quite yet because I think um, writing application tests is a little bit more advanced and it's a little bit premature to introduce testing, whether it's unit or integration tests. Uh, maybe an end-to-end -end test make more sense, but again, that's still too premature. So we're going to skip the next two lessons because I don't believe you need it quite yet right now. I don't believe the candid UI is necessary, nor the unit testing is necessary for now 
to make you a competent blockchain developer. So we're going to jump straight into Motoko level two. And like I said, if you want to join my study group, it's only two ICPs a month. Uh, hit me up on Discord or, or James Allen Zero. And please do not try to ne negotiate that price with me. I've seen people try that over and over and say, oh, can you make it one ICP a month? What about the other individuals who already paid two ICP a month? I'm not going to negotiate the price with you. That's very uh, insulting, to be honest. So please don't ask me about that because I'll just get upset and block you. In any case, my misfits, that's all I have for you in this episode. Don't forget to press that like button and support me on Patreon. I will see you next time.